going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Reality Recap Edition. I am your host, Nick, joined with me by the household, our pop culture correspondent, and my lovely fiance, Nally Joy, and our special guest for today, the one, the only, Sierra! Robinson. Oh my god! You sound like you're like announcing a fight. Like, I got a little like sweaty. Fight do, we, do we not like? This? I, 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 we got to hype up our guests. <laughs> what I'm is, hyped. What is that? Um, no. What do they say in the ring? Um, the announcer. Yeah. Uh, let's get ready yeah. to rumble. That's what you sound like. Uh, there we go. Uh, if he, you're he, wearing headphones. I'm so sorry. He's he gets yelling paid, in your He gets ear. paid a million dollars every time he says that. A million dollars every. Last time? time I checked, maybe it's more now. His brother also. Who is, do we know, what's his name? Allie, Justin, can we look it the up? The guy who says, let's get ready to rumble? Yeah. Is it trademarked? Yeah, he trademarked it. Michael Buffer? And doesn't he have a brother, I think, who does it too? He really him. handsome guy. He looks like he should be like a soap opera actor or like a Bond Yeah, he's villain. 79. Yeah. And he makes a million dollars every time someone says, let's get ready to rumble? I think something like that. That's or, or crazy. Well, I'm, or he says it. I don't know. Well, so there's Michael Buffer and then his brother... Bruce Buffer. Bruce, Bruce Buffer. is 66. He's okay. a spring chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, Bruce. Uh, are we allowed to say, let's get ready to rumble? Maybe not. I don't oh, know. my God. I think he might Venmo request you. Oh, shit. <laughs> what did Travis we'll Kelsey... Off, like, what did, bleep it. Let's get ready to bleep. Like, what did Travis <laughs> Kelsey trademark? All right. What was it? All uh, right now. Or all right now. <laughs> did he trademark that? <laughs> Should I trademark yuck? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, Sierra, how are you? I'm so good. Uh, we, uh, Sierra and I and Natalie, we've all been friends for some time now. Uh, and last time I ran into Sierra was at a little event hosted by Wells Adams in Fox. Joe Mobley. Joe and Am- Mobley, and uh, we were there, and we started talking. Uh, Bravo, and some housewives and pop culture. And 30 minutes later, I was like, I have to go find my fiance because sierra and i got into it <laughs> and by into it like we were just like rifting about our takes and i was like we gotta get sierra on the show She's... i mean we started in a group and the next thing you know it's just <sighs> me and nick talking we've got uh vanderpump rules we hit all of the topics and then we were like oh wait everyone else had walked <laughs> there, away from y'all there's a party happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was really enthralled with uh sierra's take so i'm happy to Thank have you, you uh Share them with our audience. Okay, I got, I got my head is spinning because there's just so much going on here at the Vile Files. Like, first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Happy Year. Year. I 2024. hope your 2024 is off to a great start. Uh, sure. Ours is. Uh, this, this, this show is about to go to new heights. New heights. I'm so not, And not to steal. Not to, not, not, we're, we're not going to go. <laughs> That's not, we're not, we're not we're getting gonna tra- get sued today. <laughs> yes. Did they trademark that fucking too? We're going to go to new mountains. New mountains. We're going to go to new mountains. Uh, we got some amazing interviews lined up for you all. It's going to be. I don't epic. think anyone is prepared or ready or. <sighs> I, I just, this month is going to be. Iconic. Insane. Insane. Iconic. And iconic and insane. Uh, so insane that next week, uh, scheduling note. Um, next week, Monday, Ask Nick is being moved to Tuesday. Oh my gosh. Because we have a special going deeper on Monday. And that's all we're going to say right now. And then we have another going deeper, another epic going deeper on Thursday, next week. So hold, cancel all of your plans for next week. Hold on <laughs> to your butts. Like, it's going to get wild. Yeah. Like. Just stay home and listen to the Vow Files. Yeah. It's just going to be incredible. And that's, and that's just us getting started in January. I mean, it's so exciting. How do you feel about our lineup? Uh, I'm thrilled. I can't say a word, but I am so thrilled. I know what I'm doing all month. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spending time with these two. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. Near far. Uh, Near and far. Before we get anything else, we do have some sad news. Yeah. Some sad news. Uh, You may have noticed that Amanda is not on the show. She hasn't been for a couple weeks. Amanda recently was given an opportunity to bet on herself on a new project. And so she decided to uh, pursue that opportunity and um, has left the vile files. But we wish her the absolute best of luck in life. And we love her. Uh, And we love Amanda. And uh, we are sad to see her go. But as, as always, the household continues to change and grow we have uh, what well, leia started today 
Uh, how many new members we have? Oh, by the way, hi, Justin. Hello. I'm, sure. I'm, sure. I'm, sure. I'm hiding Justin. in the background, yeah. in the shadows. Um, so there's, yeah. a, there's a big team behind Vile Files that a lot of y'all don't even know yeah. about, um, but it is, yeah, constantly changing and just growing, and it's crazy here. Yeah, it's a new year. Expansion. New household. Yes. New-ish it. household. I mean, Justin, I mean, Allie. Allie. <laughs> Allie. Yeah, she's uh she's like she's like herpy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly is like underrated. No, <laughs> Which honestly is like the best if you could have any of them. Because you the can't best. die from it. And you know, it's you, with like, you always. Yeah. No, <laughs> Allie Allie is uh my OG. She's uh, been with me for the longest uh tenured household member now. Truly. Anything you want to say to your, for yourself? Can I get like a jacket or something? <gasps> sure. <laughs> can we can make you a jacket. <laughs> sure. yeah. We can make you a jacket. Yeah. And, any special cute. requests? It needs to be decorated, like the military. Like well, it needs was, like the patch patches. Yeah. I've never was like athletic, so I'll take like a Letterman jacket. Well, I hate to like add oh, something to God. your plate, but you are in charge of merch. So if you want to make your own jacket. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, I hate to add that to your plate, but if you want it. Do you want to make yourself a leather, Letterman jacket, Allie? <laughs> sure. Okay. I'll get right on that. <laughs> Sierra, what was the most fascinating story that captivated your hearts over the holiday break? Fascinating story that cop. <laughs> okay. Um, I would probably say, am I leading in too much with the with the two men that got stuck at the airport? Oh no, we can start there. Can we start there? Yeah. Absolutely. What were their names? One was Justin. <laughs> was that- His name was Dustin with a D. Oh, Dustin. I got that okay. mixed up. I thought it was my twin. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this, but it was it went viral over the internet, and it probably only went viral because Nick watched it so many times. <laughs> it was so hilarious. Can we play it? Can we? It's 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 a, a what seems to be a lovely couple. They were wearing matching striped sweaters. Um, two Dustin, men. Dustin. Do we know their names? Dustin Dust- and and his husband Anthony. Okay. Dustin and Anthony were at an airport at an American airline counter. And, uh, first mistake. <laughs> yeah, that was their first mistake. <laughs> but yeah, let's just play it. You don't care about the girls. You don't care about the girls. Hello, everybody. Dustin. American Airlines. Fuck the server. <laughs> Here we go. Listen, Here we go. Don't talk anymore. Do you care about the girls? So I want to tell you about Shelby and Dominic. <laughs> Shelby and Dominic. Shelby and Dominic. Shelby, Shelby and Dominic. Shelby and Dominic. Shelby and Dominic. Shelby and Dominic. And then he tries to like. There's this lovely lady who seems to be in a wheelchair with her service dog, and then he tries to like. Confide in her. Reason with her. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off, bitch. Fuck off, bitch. Sweeping the nation. I will say, if you pay attention, there's like little girls that are having like the best time of their lives. Yeah, there's these kids in the audience just like jaws drop. In the audience. I know, like it's a Broadway show. You know, you, but you know why I was captivated by this video? It's not because of the charmingness of the uh, of the couple or their matching sweaters or the fuck you bitch. It's that, honestly, like, I get it. The closest I've ever gotten to, like, losing my mind in, in life, actually just, you know, doing things I regret is at the airport. Like, yeah. I've never been closer to just absolutely losing my shit than at the airport. There's something about, like, when you're traveling and you have to go home, the stakes are already raised. Mm-hmm. And then for whatever reason, the employees, most of them, God love them, are wonderful and helpful and they empathize with your plight of just wanting to get home but like i'd say like one out of ten you 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 find some sort of person on a counter who doesn't give a fuck who hates you yeah who takes pride in your misfortune and there is something about that kind of energy that makes you just want to fucking lose it when the person behind the counter it kind of doesn't give you the how can we help but like sorry, I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there's nothing you can do. And that feeling of helplessness is like, it will make you lose your fucking mind. And I really honestly, to Dustin, it was a Dustin who lost his mind. Yeah. I understand you. 
<laughs> Thank you for speaking for all of us. <laughs> By the way, who are the girls? Are they dogs? Can, can, I, can I say that? Yeah, literally. Um, that entire time, I watched that video like 10 times because I was trying to figure out who they were talking about because he kept saying, remember the girls, remember the girls. And I was like, who are these girls? And then come to find out it's like they're two huskies or something. Is no, it? Yeah, it is. it's like two, it's two puppy dogs. <laughs> But he's like, by name, what is it? Shelby, Shelby and Dominic. And Dominic. <laughs> Remember the girls. Dobby. Dolly, Dolly. Dolly. Like Dolly Parton. Really? Shelby yeah. and Dolly. I, I don't heard, know. My ears were definitely hearing Dominic. <laughs> I heard the same sure. thing. But truly, it was just like, who are the girls? And then it was like, no, nope, it's their dogs. And I was like, I actually understand that more so. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. I respect that. Where I'm like, if I'm on my last leg and I'm just ready to go home and cuddle with my dog, like nothing is stopping me. This is... <laughs> well, What's funny about that, he's saying remember the girls as, as, as if, like, don't lose your shit because this is going to embarrass your daughters. Like, yeah. they're, like they're, it'll be on the internet. They're going to see watch this. It. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, you're, you're oh, remember the girls. And to meanwhile, you find out it's two dogs who aren't going to have any Didn't concept, even notice. Have, don't know, not, they're not going to notice at all. Was not expecting you back right at 8 p.m., but like, thank you. Thank you for the entertainment. Has American Airlines issued any type of apology or said anything? And honestly, it's not shocking that it's American. What's your favorite, la- least favorite airline? American. Out of like American United and Delta, like the main three, Delta Amer- is by far my favorite. Agreed. And American, I just see so many horror stories and even like people who have flown with them for like decades, like where I'm like most airlines take care of you after a while of just being loyal to them. And like even today I watched a TikTok where they got stranded. They had to get on a flight from Seattle and they said if they went to Dallas, Fort Worth, that they would give them a hotel overnight. The people got to Dallas and uh, the person at the front was like, sorry, nope. And they show the the suited man driving off in a golf cart and being like, no one's going to help us. I'm here with my granddaughter. There's 15 people waiting at the American Airlines uh, station. And then they got security involved to remove the <sighs> grandfather that was filming. Yeah, and like did not get any of them hotels, and I was just like, they I left them stranded in Dallas. Left them stranded in Dallas, like, and they agreed to go from Seattle to uh, Dallas because of the hotel. So I'm just like, wow. Well, well why would you uh, agree to that? I just I don't agree with anything. Like when they're just like, hey, we'll give you a voucher. Hey, and if it's you- like you can never trust any of them because they're like, y- you trust the one that you talk to, and then you get to a place where they're like, just tell them that I sent you, and then you get to them, and they're like. I don't know who that is. And yeah. like, I don't, we don't know. We I'm don't do that. that. Yeah, we don't yeah. do that. And it's like, well, they told me that. And I just walked 45 <laughs> <Yeah>. minutes <laughs> like, to get here. Sorry, wasn't me. Uh, there is no worse experience than, no. the, than airport problems. You know what is also a worse experience? Um, getting someone a gift that they hate. <laughs> yeah. Did this happen recently? As, it happens actually a lot with Nick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll start out strong. Um, I obviously he's the massive fan of the Packers, right? right? So I was like, oh my god, anything Packer, he'll like die over. So I got him this Packer, um, like like championship shirt. Okay. This was a long time ago. But this was the first incident that I was like, oh no. <laughs> and I gave him the shirt and it was It was a Super Bowl that they lost. Oh. <laughs> you did not know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would I? But also they made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Sure. Is so, that a regular she, thing? I'm not a sports girl. She gave it to me and I go, they lost this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, perfect. We'll never do this again. Um we we're at Wells and Sarah's I could house. Just see the high and just <laughs> the low. We we're at Wells and Sarah's house and you know they have that lettuce grow? Yes. And Nick was like, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, this is so, like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. He hyped it up. He kept looking at it. He kept, like, touching things on it. And I was like, I'm going to get him that for Christmas. Got him it for Christmas? Hasn't opened it. Oh, well, it's actually, like, the, he never built it. It's on the side of our house in pieces. And and just, like, Nick. was never put together. Things got, like, chewed up by the dog and then rained on and then, like, completely ruined. That's my bad. That was on me. What do you have to say for yourself? I, uh, I'm. I, I get a lot of things done, but I don't want to put anything together. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So how mm-hmm. did Christmas this year go? It was wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. loved everything. Uh, Natalie bought s- some of my presents turned out to be for Natalie. Well, oh. Like we share? Well. well benefits the house? Benefits the there baby? There was, like, a pullover that, like. Uh, that I bought for him because like he looked so cute in this, and then as soon as he opened it, he was like, "I don't wear pullovers." And I was like, "Okay, perfect, <laughs> I'll take that. it." The fuck? <laughs> now this version of what happens? It's like gifting the Grinch over here, just no, like mark, mark. literally, <laughs> but <laughs> not literally. That's not how it sounds. That's what she hears. He's I mean, like, oh. <laughs> 
She's I'm like, like, the silence is loud. I will, I will say like, that, like, I, I think my facial expressions say a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think Natalie, in her head, will, like, look at my face and then hear I don't wear pullovers. She goes, he hates this the most. Yeah. <laughs> so then, of course, I was like, well, I bought it because I thought you would look so cute in it. I loved it. So I'll keep it. Gorgeous. And now he, every time I wear it, he's mad. He's like, I thought we were going to return that. <laughs> okay. Now you're wearing Again, it. Again, that's not how it went. <laughs> You said, where's the gift receipt? <laughs> um, you removed the tags. Oh, perfect. Tags okay. are off. <laughs> Honestly, perfect. that's how it more sounded like. I bet. I bet. Yeah. And I can understand why in her head it sounded, oh, okay. <laughs> so you're keeping it. Yeah. yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Did you like your presents? Oh my gosh. Loved. I make it so easy. I send Nick screenshots and links and like literally the easiest. I walk in. I'm I, like, can I have this? I like, I'd even do like stocking stuff for ideas and it's like screenshots. <laughs> I need to do this. So... Because honestly, I think next year I might not do that. And I might just like see. That's on you. Oh, see how well you know me. Like, what would you do? Like last year. I will buy you things that you won't like. (laughs) Last year. (laughs) And you will actually say that. (laughs) Would you do that on purpose that I never do it again? No, of course not. But you know you better than me. That's true. Yeah. What was your favorite gift? My favorite gift. Hmm. Well, gosh, I loved all of them, honestly. Um, he really spoiled me this year. Yeah. He really did. He, cause I sent him like three really expensive, a go yard bag. Okay. Um, Saint Laurent loafers mm-hmm. and Celine sunglasses. Okay. And it was kind of like a pick one, like these are three big gifts, you know, whatever. Well, but daddy went to Vegas and won, <laughs> you know, so. Daddy. Oh, I mean, shit. that was a straight face. <laughs> oh, shit. That was a straight face. Oh, my God. Could y'all clear the room for a second? <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah, he went to Vegas and he got a little lucky at the yeah. blackjack table. And... So I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend this on my girl. Uh, and he also got himself a Burberry suit. Don't let him see for yeah, you. I did. I did. I, did. I mean. So I loved all of them. And then. Then he left my car door unlocked and someone broke in and stole the shoes. So got the shoes again. <laughs> he did. He did. He rebought them because it was his fault. He went. No, this I is. Un- I didn't unlock it. This is how door. this happened. So I've lost four pairs of sunglasses okay. in bulk, which is like not like me. I don't lose stuff like that, like expensive things. I really, you know, mm-hmm. I've been poor for most of my life. So I don't lose expensive things. Right. And. All of a sudden, I'm like, where are all of these sunglasses? Like, it's got to be pregnancy brain or like Cindy is putting them somewhere. Something's going on. So Nick takes my car to the grocery store one night, comes home, cook dinner. We go to bed, wakes up. He has to move my car out of the driveway so he can back out. Okay. And he comes inside. He's like, good news, bad news. I found your sunglasses. And it's two cheap ones that are in my center console. And I'm like, that's definitely not them. Yeah. But um, thanks to you. He's, What's the bad news? He's like, someone <laughs> broke into your car. You've got to lock your car, babe. And I was like, <laughs> me? <laughs> you took my car last night and you didn't lock it. He was like, oh, well, sorry. And then I started thinking. I was like, oh, my God. Those St. Laurent shoes I was going to like exchange for eight and a half. I was going to go. Tr- so I like had them in my trunk to take to Beverly Hills. Oh, no. And I went and opened up my trunk and it was just empty. And I was like, no. And I immediately start sobbing. And Nick's like, they didn't take anything like invaluable. Like we can like. Nothing we can't replace. Yeah. Like don't, you know, they didn't like kill anyone. They need it more than we do. I will say to have. And so I watched it back on the camera and like seeing someone in your car, in your just like, it's so violating. It's so scary and creepy. And that whole next day, like I couldn't go into my car. I was so shook. I already struggle with intruder syndrome, Fair. which I don't know if that's the correct term for it, but I constantly feel like someone's going to break in. No, I think that's that's. And also with having yeah. a baby, too, I think the mama <laughs> mode comes in and it's just like, yeah. everybody wants my baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to get in my house and take my stuff. Yeah. So I feel like um, making the house Fort Knox. So if you're listening and you stole my shoes, I hope, I hope karma comes for you. Everyone, Gypsy Rose is out of prison. <gasps> Iconic. I Congratulations to Gypsy Rose for finally being released. Have you been following this story? Not so much the release. I will say I did watch the uh, documentary again on, recently. On HBO? Mm-hmm. And then did you watch the act? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. I'm like fully caught up, big supporter. She has a new documentary coming out this Friday on Lifetime. And an ebook too, right? Yeah. Uh, I've seen clippets of the documentary on Lifetime. A must watch. Crazy. It's from prison? Yeah, she was interviewed. It's I think, like right the... before she has her parole hearing. Yeah, okay. so for like, pr- like the 18 months prior to her parole hearing or, yeah. Um, she was interviewed by, I believe, Lifetime. Did she get eight years and then was up for parole? She got 10 years and was up for parole after eight and a half. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's such a crazy story. She's doing it right. She seems to be, yeah. And like, my here are my thoughts so far mm-hmm. on Gypsy Rose, is that she deserves the benefit of the doubt. She does like, this is a person whose whole life the ability to choo- make decisions for themselves was stolen from her in every possible way. So from true. from being a, a young child and the abuse that she had to endure from her mother. And obviously, you know, what happened to her mother, you know, was tragic. But how could any of us put her, try to put ourselves in Gypsy's shoes and know what we would do? Absolutely not. You know, and she has served her time in prison. And now that she's out and in love and she seems to really be from everything I can tell a little bit, just from her posts and the things that are out there, really putting her best foot forward to try to make the most. I mean, this is the first time in her life that she's truly free, you know, and think about it. Like being in prison for her on some level was her leveling up and having freedom. Right. The ability to make friends with people she was in prison with because she wasn't, she wasn't even allowed to do that in her life prior to going to prison trying new foods, Mm -hmm. you know, like being able to consume whatever content she wanted without the fear of what her captor, her mom could do. I mean, the feeding tube. Yeah. It's such a tragic story. So I was talking to my sister about it and it's kind of crazy how like if she would have asked anyone else to kill her mom, they probably would have been like, babe, no, like, let's just go to the police. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know. Like, let's come on. Let's think healthy. Let's go to the police. We'll tell them everything. Like, we'll get you out. Don't worry. But she asked Nick, go to John, who struggled with personality disorder. And um, instead of that route, he took the like, yeah, sure. I'll kill her. But if like she would have asked anyone else, you know, do we even know that, though? I mean, I guess if she found another person who struggled with like a dark side and you I know, guess what I'm, you know, it's just like, again, like you know, Gypsy was in this kind of, she was in this Didn't darkness, I... this, this, this crazy world that it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, I don't know. Didn't they meet on like a Christian dating site? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's the wildest part of it all. Right. Is that it's just like, there's so much compassion and so much love in that relationship. But then at the same time, it's like the idea that it went to murder murder, murder. <laughs> you know it, it's, it is wild it is wild because it's like there's just so many dynamics to it to where you're just like i could never put myself in her shoes because i'm like when you hear about munchausen's or munchausen's by proxy you, you're you're like it's it's so wild that it's like how would you actually like you wouldn't even know that it's happening to you while it's happening you know what i mean I know, yeah it's... so it's just like the idea that it's like it came to that where i'm like i get it i get it too i'm like i Anybody will do anything for their freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, we, you can't even comprehend what it would be like to be in Gypsy's shoes because all she knew was like the control her mom had, you know? Right. And so to, to, for us, for anyone to suggest, oh, well, why didn't you do this? Or you could have done or should have done this. Like, okay. Like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know how you would react knowing like, her perception of the world was so different in terms of what her options were, right. you know, and what she thought was, again, options to somehow secure her freedom. Right. Like, how could you even put yourself in her shoes? I also think she tried a lot more than people think she did. Yeah. Like in a couple of the clips that I saw of Lifetime, she talked about how she did try to run away several times. Yeah. And people keep being like, why wouldn't you just walk out the front door? It's like she tried, but obviously it's like it's a small town. They found her, you know. Her mom is crazy. Her, also, her mom was I mean, seemed evil. Oh, and know? also like imagine that too, where it's like the people that are supposed to be ta- or the person that's supposed to be taking the most care of you that you have that as a child you're ingrained to just believe is goodness. 
and then to like slowly grow up and realize that like the person that you love the most that you believe loves you the most in the world is also the person that's hurting you yeah, yeah and benefiting scary. off of it and that's truly for all the times that people often use the phrase trauma bonding mm-hmm. people mostly use it incorrectly they think if it's you know people often nowadays refer to it as like two people bonding over you know Mutual. both having trauma yeah and that's not trauma bonding trauma bonding is what you saw like when you watched the act or one of these documentaries this bond that gypsy had with her mom mm-hmm. over the trauma that her mom put on her that's right. that's what trauma bonding is it's my understanding um and, and knowing that, she can't leave yeah but that and that's the thing gypsy truly loved her mom right and there was a bond there because that was her only source of protection what she thought you know right. it, it's such a complicated messy story so i get nothing but empathy for gypsy and wishing her absolutely nothing but the best and you know, again, so far, it's just like life is about choices and it's about learning from mistakes. And she was put in such a terrible situation. And so far, she seems to be trying to make the most of these new opportunities. She's in love. Yeah. She's got her wonderful husband, Ryan, who in his, have you seen his Instagram bio? Uh, not his Instagram bio. I've looked at pictures, though. It is, uh, some might say what every man should be writing in their bio about their lady. What it's like, say? my name is Ryan Anderson. I am from Louisiana, and I am married to the most beautiful, wonderful, loving, funny, amazing person, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> Period. Done. I Making showed it Connor- to Nick, and I was like, it's <laughs> 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 fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> Making Connor an Instagram he knows nothing about. <laughs> like, I wish up the ground she walks on Sierra Robinson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're already like... Yeah. You know, and she's got a nice rock on her finger. I saw and mm-hmm. was like fresh out of prison, and she was like hair done. I'm in- celebrating the done. holidays. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see. Unfortunately, though, goes. she did get kicked out of the state of Missouri. Did you see that? I did. She not. was going to go. She was. She bought tickets to go to the Kansas City uh, Chiefs game. Chiefs versus uh, who did they play? Oh, the Bengals. Bengals. They beat the mm. Bengals. Anyway, she bought tickets and in, in hopes, you know, she's a big Taylor Swift fan, obviously, as we are. Right. Um, and hopes that, you know, who knows? She's shooting her shot. She's a big fan. Maybe I'll get to meet Taylor. Taylor's going to be at the game. And then, like, the day before, it was announced that this, her parole officer, like, called her up, apparently, you know, and was like, hey, you can't be in the state of Missouri. I don't know why. And maybe have to do with like maybe a security risk of some kind. I mean, she's a the entire state of Missouri. I guess she had to leave, so now she's in Louisiana, where her husband Ryan is from, and her and staying mom, there. And her but she couldn't. And dad. Yeah, her stepmom and her her dad and her stepmom. Um, and then therefore she couldn't go to the game. Unfortunately, do we know what her her connection to Missouri is? is well, that... that's where her and her mom. So that's where it all happened. That's where it all happened. Yeah, There's that's where her mom moved to. Yeah, okay. yeah. They were like they were brought there after Hurricane By Katrina. Habitat for Humanity. They yeah. built that house, right? Yeah. Okay, so now, yeah, maybe that's like her roots are in Louisiana. That's where they moved there from, right? Know, so that's what I thought, but I was like, oh, maybe because of the bad publicity or something. I don't like, know. I, I don't. I don't know what bad publicity. I mean, like, I feel like also parole officers. Like, I want to keep my eyes on you, but this one's like, no, nope, get on. <laughs> yeah, get down. Fast, fast, I mean, there's so much that we're hope to learn from gypsy yeah you know what she been up to like what has she been craving she left prison she had a fucking 12 pack of dr pepper love, love. girl who knows the soda as two soda fans natalie and i yeah uh, dr we, pepper is it honestly like mm-hmm. coca-cola and dr pepper are probably my two faves have you ever tried mixing them never the like a, nick's like a, a 10 year old at the fountain station he's like no no just the two he's a chemist if you're out there gypsy try some go to next time you're at like a mcdonald's fountain drinks and they have a dr pepper and a mcdonald's does uh mcdonald's have dr pepper i don't know mr pib not the not quite it's the not quite the same, same is it no <laughs> um but mix that mix that coca-cola and dr pepper half and half half and half okay good it's to know wild <laughs> i'll call you with updates yeah. <laughs> what do you think gypsy missed them honestly i was about to say what do you think gypsy missed the most she didn't know anything she, she everything is new to her right i was like having life experiences I mean, it's so crazy that so many things she's going to be trying for the very first time. I right. mean, I said, like, what do we think the first place she goes to after prison is? And we get guest McDonald's and she went to McDonald's. Ugh. But it's like, yeah, of course you would. Iconic. Like, like, I would love to take Gypsy out with Ryan, of course, uh-huh. and that, like a double date out in like a city and just like. 
go to restaurant after restaurant and just like have her try things for the first time. <laughs> experiences show her all of the sights yeah. yeah like what do you want to see what do you want to taste literally I th to me it's food that i would miss the most like just like if i were incarcerated or kept away from the things i enjoy it's the, f the the foods i love that's the things i would miss the most and i think like celebrating like holidays and things like sure. i'm like yeah. you're not really stringing up lights in the in the mm. cell you know what i mean like i'm like i would miss like traveling and like seeing friends mm -hmm. But just doing normal everyday things. Now I'm she like to make friends. Exactly. I, mean, I wonder how she made some friends. That's probably in prison too. Oh, I'm sure. But I'm like her journey's just started. Just starting. You know, and I think that's so exciting. Like it's like being a baby at twenty something. No, she's <laughs> yeah. thirty two. She's thirty two. Yeah. Dang. That is crazy. I couldn't imagine, but I'm like, I'm so like, I, I want to hear all about it. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know, like, where is the first place that you're excited to go to once parole clears? I think yeah, I wonder what her limit. Yeah. Another great question. Like, yeah. What are her limits? Like what can or can she do? Is there like a place that she's always wanted to go overseas? You know, can she drink? Can she smoke weed? Like what is she? Oh, I doubt. She can... well, I... I don't know. I mean, yeah. Drug, yeah. Drug, I don't who know. knows? I don't it's know. It's by state. It's, crazy... it's by state. So if it's uh, legal, then she would be in the clear. But like, yeah, she'd be smoking weed for the first time at 32. Wow. I mean, Nick didn't start smoking weed till he was like 35. He won't. He continues to smoke, but in the middle of the night, he's like, <laughs> "Me here," and it's like two a.m. and I'm like, "Do you want something to drink?" He's like, "No, I'm good." I'm like, "Take this water." He's like, "No, I'll have a cough drop," and then this is how Nick eats cough drops. Immediately choose it. I'm oh. like, you know that actually. That is a choice. In fact, doesn't work. <laughs> you have to suck on the cough drop you know, to lozenge the throat. Gross story. I actually verped in, in my sleep last night. You what? Verped? Verped. What is that? Like a little vomit burp. Oh my God. And it was weird. And then I like swallowed it and I went back to bed. Because like I didn't want to wake you up because the drink was on your side. I'm oh, disgusting. you guys shared water for bed? We share. We always share drinks. We have a communal cup. Oh my god! Even at dinner, is that crazy? No, that's that's real love. I would be like climbing over Connor's face, being like, "Give me that!" At at when you have the dinner, going, you both make like separate waters or like separate like drinks. When going like when we no, like dinner. at home. No, no, when you're at, at home, home. You not, a, like, not in public. We're not crazy. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're not sharing a drink at like a restaurant. <laughs> but you guys share drinks at home. Yeah, yeah. No, really, it's it's two. Well, like, yeah. Really, yeah. No, just a one big gulp. Yeah, we use like a Stanley cup and we just fill it with water and and you guys go back and forth. Yeah, no, I mean I sure. love Connor with all my heart. Six years later, and like I would never share. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm like I'm a big uh, beverage girl, also, yeah. so it's like, mm, and I don't like getting up to refill. So I'm like, all of my drinks right there. He has his own, and then well, Natty doesn't like to refill either. Yeah, Nick is designated refill. Yeah, sure. I don't really like getting anything for myself to be completely honest. <laughs> well, Neither do I. Oh yeah, my god, no. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what you're here for. That's why we started sharing a, a big gulp because it was like, you know what? I could, we could just, why don't you just have some of mine and then I will just keep filling mine. Yeah. And that no. way it feels like I'm filling my glass and not our glass. I, I love the like, what's yours is mine. I think that's really sweet. I'm just, mm. I've never heard of that mm. in my life. I don't know. I, I don't love. love the term verp. Did you just make that up? No. That's you, a thing. You've never heard of a vomit burp? No. And I honestly don't. Or I wish kinda, I had, I wish like, I hadn't. I don't need, yeah, <laughs> I don't need you... the noises either, I'll be honest with you. And did you just like wake up and were like, that was weird? Or were it, you like, I kind of choked on that? No, I was like, that was weird. What is <laughs> what is going on? And then I was like, I'll Not just go back face. to bed. <laughs> oh like, my gosh. And I was just asleep beside you this yeah, whole time? I didn't want to bother you. I had the dogs surrounding me. That's so sweet. I sleep in a dog sandwich now. Yeah. I am a hot dog. Oh. Every night. The dogs Literally. are, yeah. They're the buns. They are. As you're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always like to begin our new year, Nellie and I, by cleaning out our closet. But this year, we're also upgrading it with some pieces that last beyond the seasons from Quince. Because Quince is making it so much easier to buy some luxuriously nice and unique pieces without those luxury prices. Quince has become my go-to for literally, as Nick mentioned, those staples in your closet. I love to find things that I can mix and match and just kind of like make the most out of what's in my closet. So I got a really cute tank top that kind of has like a crisscross neck. 
I also got this very fun, like satin, silky, midi length skirt that I love. And I can mix and match them with everything else in my closet. And I will be shopping more soon. Yeah, maybe if you're looking for like a really nice cashmere sweater, uh, we all know that can break the bank, or maybe a nice 100% leather jacket. Well, their cashmere crew neck sweaters uh, start at just $59. You can't beat that. I mean, you can literally spend 10 times that on a cashmere sweater, but not at Quince. No, no, no. They also have a wide selection of so many other things. Women's clothes, bags, men's clothes, women's outerwear, travel, home decor, and so much more. So if you're looking for really anything, Quince has something for everyone and they have quality pieces unique pieces for far more affordably prices because they're cutting out that middleman and one thing that i love about quince is that they only work with factories that use safe ethical and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes so you know you're getting things for a great price they're coming from a great place that's win 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 they have these stunning italian leather tote bags that i got my mom for christmas and they are so stunning upgrade your closet with quince go to quince.com slash v-i-a-l-l for free shipping and 365 day returns on your order that's quince q-u-i-n-c-e dot com slash v-i-a-l-l to get free shipping and 365 day returns quince.com slash v-i-a-l-l it's a new year. That means new opportunities to make new connections. But when it comes to dating, it can be tough to put yourself out there and know where to start. That's why I'm excited to talk to you about Hinge, the dating app designed to be deleted. Hinge is the perfect dating app to use in the new year because it really allows you to go beyond the surface, express your personality and meet people who are on the same page. So if you're looking to take a fresh approach to dating in 2024, you got to check out Hinge and take the time to invest or reinvest in your profile. Update those prompts, photos, and dating intentions and make sure they reflect who you are and what you're looking for this year. It can be as easy as updating your profile to add the Hinge prompt, this year I really want to. And you can give the answer, make 10 new recipes. Or the answer could be, learn fly fishing. Doesn't really matter as long as it creates a conversation. Manifest the dating experience you want this year. Download Hinge and find someone worth deleting the app for. Uh, should we get into some Bravo talk? Always. What, uh, Sierra made a great point as soon as she walked in today. Oh, yeah. Um how Bravo just screws us over every year during the holidays. And it's the period of time when everybody's home, tired of dealing with like family, no longer have anything to do. And then you go and put on your Bravo show and it's just not there. I saw a lot of people complain about that over the holidays. Uh, I complained on TikTok. I brought it I brought it to the talk and I was like, hey, Bravo, whoever is in charge of the programming here, why are we doing this? <laughs> I'm like, this is the time that we all need this type of clarity, this type of like drama that has nothing to do with us. We've had family in town. We've been cooking. We've been shopping. We've been running the rat race. And now we finally have that period between after Christmas and before New Year's where nobody expects anything from us. And I can't watch a little SLC Figure out why everybody hates Monica. How dare you? I have been in Bermuda for three weeks. <laughs> I'm over it. For three weeks. I and I still home. don't know <laughs> why we Bermuda. hate Monica. Yeah, we're still in Bermuda. They all hate Monica. She was actually my favorite housewife, uh, like new introduction. Not going to lie. According to Rachel Lindsay, really... this, she's a one and dunner. Really? You think she's not coming back next season? That, well, that's I, what she thinks. That's what Rachel thinks. I Rachel think has seen basically every Bravo episode. Not to take anything away from your expertise. Rachel, come out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but it, she was at BravoCon and said that the rest of the cast clearly her, yeah. refused to talk to her and speak with her. And like, how how do you film a season unless you're Mary? Of mm -hmm. course, obviously, she can go to Mary McDonald's Cosby. drive through mm -hmm. You can only have one kind of, this is my show and I'm going right. to do my own thing. You can't have Monica and Mary do that with the rest of the cast. And like, yeah. That's unfortunate. I was like, I really liked her energy when she came in. I also thought she was going to like come on the show as like a Jen Shaw informant. So I thought we were just going to be like getting like random tidbits of like what she learned yeah. while working for her. But then I'm also kind of like how interesting that it's like I didn't put two and two together, the red flags. And I'm like, you worked for Jen Shaw somehow, ended up on this show and now you're just wreaking havoc. Yeah. But like she was such like a, a real one when she came on, you know, the whole like, oh, I had to go buy a purse because I felt like I needed to keep up with the Joneses, all of that. And then now with the whole putting Meredith in the DMs situation, like and throwing Meredith under the bus. And that's where I'm like, mm. do you think she sent 
the DMs? I think Monica did. That's what everyone seems to be saying. I've heard also that she had a fake, um, like an Instagram, like meme account or something, that. and a just like swives meme account and, and going in on them. Yeah. So it's like the the backstory there. I'm like, mm. Monica kind of seems like a bad egg. She is. She is. But she does a really she's great TV. Exactly. She's great reality TV, and she does a really good job of like kind of playing on your emotions but now it's like I I also feel like a crazy person like second guessing everything but imagine being her and like truly not giving a fuck about doing some of these destructive things which started with like having the affair with her brother-in-law and every time she talks about it this season she like sheepishly says it and then laughs afterwards right taking no accountability no and then like and then imagine like doing this or like around your kids and like prominently showcasing your children on this show all while like getting like involving yourself in illegal nefarious activity. Well, because it's like also still their uh, uncle, right? I would presume, unless right. Unless How, what was the? It was her husband's sister's husband. Yeah, who's the brother-in-law? So I guess if the sister and him, do we know if they divorced or if they're yeah, still together what's from going that? On there? Would love to hear their side of the story. Um, like especially if it's like in the Mormon church too, I wouldn't be surprised that they did not divorce, right. but also didn't expect that outside variable was going to go on national television <laughs> and be like, by yeah. the way, slept with <laughs> yeah, and like very, and like, that's what I'm saying. So it's like in the beginning I saw that and I was like, wow, good for her because I'm like all these housewives go on doing like uh, in, insider trading and embezzling money and whatnot. And then they go on reality TV and be like, I can't believe I got caught. So I was like, good for Monica to put, get ahead of it and be like, hey, by That's the way, I did. did some things in my past. And then like now I'm like, mm, I don't trust anything that you say. Even the mom stuff. I'm like, have you guys been watching the whole season? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like even the drama between yeah, the like mom. her and her like, mom. Who do you really believe now? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, they're both she narcissists. She her mom as like some sort of monster. Some sort of crazy. Well, I'm like, but her mom totally is a thousand percent but i'm like the apple doesn't fall far from yeah. the tree so i'm also kind of like i don't think there's one person that's in the wrong and one person in the right here did you see the video her mom made yeah and it's I like this. she posted on tiktok or instagram and she basically was like talking about how you remember how monica said she left me at like some yeah, family's yeah. house and moved to new york city and it was basically her like trying to defend that. And she was like, it wasn't some random family. They were our neighbors and Monica loved them. And she would always like hang out with them all the time. That's and still so I, little... and it's like, I think you're still missing the point. A thousand <laughs> like... percent. She's like, I got a good job and I couldn't bring you with. And, and, and at that point, yeah. But she was like, you were fine. You loved that family. And I'm like, yeah. no child understands <laughs> like mommy's not coming back for a year or two. <laughs> yeah. Because she's trying to make a better life. And the thing too is that like New York didn't work out. So it's also like, you think she was there. I don't know how long she was there for, but it was like at the end of the day, it's like, oh, sorry, you have fun. And then I come back and be like, well, it didn't work. Didn't work out. Can't really provide a better life for you, but uh, enjoy yeah. that trauma. Yeah, <laughs> truly. Who do, we, who do we think's crazier, the mom or Monica? The mom. The mom. You think so? mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If we, if we could get out of Bermuda and somebody could tell me what actually <laughs> went out. down, yeah. then I would know because I'm like, I know it has something to do with Heather's business that she like. The rumor is that Monica went to several of Heather's businesses disguised okay, and got services and then basically like wouldn't pay for them or like sued them, I sued think. Sued them and saying it was like bad. And now Heather finds out that it was Monica well, no, on so the trip. Heather came out and she said that the hot mic moment on the Bermuda trip isn't about Monica oh. or it's not about the lawsuit. So she said the lawsuit happened after they shot Bermuda. So she hasn't revealed what it is, but she says that like the real drama hasn't started yet. <gasps> the Jesus. real drama hasn't started yet as before in, the finale. As in the finale <laughs> is the real drama. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I bet the reunion also is going to be insane. Wild. The dinner of Monica and her mom where mm -hmm. they're like trying to her mom's like trying to apologize and she just like keeps her calling her a motherfucker and oh, yeah. like she, she needs an I aspirin. Need aspirin. <laughs> it's just the it's so wild and it's just it, it makes me feel so sad for Monica because I'm sure like I can't imagine how hard that is to like have your mom be that type of mom and also want to be on the show mm -hmm. and want to be like in the spotlight and trying to and throw you under the bus people wrong but, yeah it's but monica weird. is doubling and tripling down on the internet she is she is leaning in as a good housewife does as is, that's what <laughs> i'm gonna say like i'm like i feel like i feel like she will be back if if 
they permit it just being that I'm like, she is good drama. She's good television. And she just doesn't. Mm -hmm. She doubles down. She doubles down and she's like, all right, kick me off the show. I don't care. And we're like, but we want to know your thoughts. Speaking of leaning in, what did you make of Dorit's post following the Mm -hmm. uh, basically the privileged episode? I like living in my bubble or whatever. I I don't know if this is going to be some sort of like uh, hot take or, but like, I'm sorry. Like, I just can't take any one housewife calling out another housewife while dripped in opulence and privilege. Right. Criticizing some other housewife of being more or less privileged. Right. Isn't that what housewives is about? To be disconnected and out of touch and living in their bubble? Um, a thousand percent, yes. It's like, uh, I, I say I watch reality TV as a social experiment of just seeing how other people live in all different walks of lives and especially with uh, the funds behind it. Well, she got like called out by Garcelle for yeah. being privileged. Dorit, and then Erica said- It's because Dorit has said, you're attacking me. Right, it's because she was so attacked. So the privilege wasn't like monetary, it was like racial is what she was getting at. Right, and I think it was- but- like, it was also because she threw Sutton under the bus with the whole making out with her driver thing mm-hmm. and trying yeah. to make it a joke. And I will say that with Dorit, like she just kind of says whatever she wants at whatever period of time. And then when she gets a little backlash for it, it's instantly like victim instead of it being like, OK, wait, what did I say that was wrong there? Like actually having the conversation, she's more like, no, 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 no. You said this. And, and it's very like defensive and very not willing to hear the other person so like that's where i'm also like i get where garcelle was coming from but i'm also kind of like we don't have to shoot all the way to like i can't with your privilege because she's not saying anything to that effect she was just kind of being a dick yeah in all honesty to sutton which is fine don't we want that i don't a thousand percent but i'm just like that's it's it's part of the housewives i'm like they're petty yeah, they're petty. They take every small little sentence and turn it into a T-shirt, a sweatshirt, a, a caption, whatever it is. But they want the effect. And I feel like Dorit doesn't really have a lot storyline wise going on right now either. So I'm like, I've, if you're going to hold on to your little bubble comment, then I'm like, she wants the attention for it. Yeah. You could also choose I'm, to ignore it. I'm f- fine with it. I just. Yeah, I don't know. Housewives arguing over privilege. I think the more I, I believe this is in the same episode, the more um, spicy part of that episode besides this was Erica asking Denise who's more profitable on OnlyFans, her or her daughter. Oh, that was (laughs) wild. I mean, she said, you don't think I'm going to go that low? Do you know me? And I was like, what? But I also want to know the answer to this question. No, truly. Because wasn't Denise like, didn't she have a package deal for $7? I think- $7 is to subscribe. $12 was the bundle. Oh. And the Garcelle said, I think if I'm Denise, I'm worth at least $10. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's mean. I would say she's worth more than that. Denise fucking Richards. Like, come she, on, She's babe. a Bond girl, yeah. She's definitely worth more. Come on. Well, we like, have- she could charge whatever she wants, but then Denise set her own prices. Well, that's what I was going to say, too. Maybe I don't she- think we know how OnlyFans works. I believe you can set your own prices. No, can yeah, it- you can. Yeah. Is there a yeah. maximum or a minimum? Like- why, are we, why are we criticizing Denise Richards for being generous? I just think for, she... For like, offering a, a deal. She's also one of like the top like performers. Whatever the yeah, performers yeah, on so OnlyFans. She's doing so, like, something right. Erica put it out of context. It makes it seem like she's cheap, but she's making money. Well, I'm like, if you think about it, if you make something affordable that anybody could get, I mean, you're going to have it. so many yeah. more people buying it than yeah. exclusivity for $1,000. Here's a picture of Denise's whatever. That's true. You know, I see why what she did, did Denise it. Denise have a. Yeah, I was. I, I feel like Denise could have had a better comeback. You are a mean woman. I think it's in the next episode. Like, I feel like she's going to clap back because they cut off, right? I think They don't so, finish the yeah. conversation. There's that, but there's also... There's plenty the... to clap back with Erica. Yeah. Well, the dinner, though, too, did not go down, I think, the way that she saw it in her head. Oh. I was like, it was very, like, incoherent and very, like, mm-hmm. she had a fever. Yes, she had a cold. Are you saying the wee dinner? Yeah. So we... she went on Bethany's podcast and she insinuated that there might have been a mix-up with the dinners. So she's saying she doesn't do weed. But she thinks that there might have been a mix up. Like they gave her a wrong plate. They gave with her the weed. wrong plate and then that like But she kind of showed up a little Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Again, Denise. Love you, babe. We love. The I assignment love her, yeah. was to get fucked up and you got fucked up and I don't think you need to apologize. <laughs> a thousand percent. Like just own it. Just own it. Yeah. Like 
get sloppy. I met give us good TV. Yeah, celebrate the fact that you're one of the top earners on OnlyFans. I, I mean, don't think we need to apologize for getting a little fucked up. Not at all, not at all. But I do want to know the answer to that question. Mm-hmm. Is, Denise, is Denise's daughter a top performer? I don't, I don't know, I don't but I so, do yeah. know that it was like. I, I remember seeing a bunch of headlines about her daughter being on only, it was like a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when she like turned, turned 18. 18, she like she got, got right on. Right. They also collabed together on, I think Sammy's had the collab of Denise and Sammy. You can collab, like on Instagram? Yeah. Yep. yeah. I don't know what the collab button? means, but there was pictures of something, I don't know. Also, it's my understanding that on, while OnlyFans is often known for nudity and adult content, there are plenty of creators who cook who cook yeah Yeah. who or or might have more of a like an r version rather than like an nc 17 you know like maybe they're covering stuff up so we don't know if maybe the collab between denise and her daughter was like more tasteful i can't see what she has listed on her page i will say this is the only time i've been on OnlyFans, and it's on my work computer i feel like everyone has to like i mean Um, i don't really know i just like like, (laughs) (laughs) she has like a lot of like it's it's like locked up but the caption is like tip me 30 dollars and i'll dm you the uncensored pic kissy do you like the view tip 11 dollars and i'll dm you the whole set jumping in the tub tip and i'll send you this photo Feeling naughty again, want to see, tip, and I'll DM you this photo. I'll be honest, I do want to see. I, it, it, I does, will it does pique the tip. curiosity. It's yes. like, you know what? I'm here. What's 30 bucks? Yeah. Something tells me it's not a casserole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Truly, it is not a casserole. Well, it's her casserole. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yummy. <Okay. laughs> and that's on period. And that's on period. Mm. Me undies currently wearing a pair of me undies right now. I am. They're stylish. Prove it. They're Show slick. us. Prove it. What? I, uh, okay, sure. Look, me undies. There's my underwear ah! right there. Uh, they're a great pair of underwear, and they're durable for even when your dog chews on them. I don't. What is it about dogs and underwear? They love that sweet, sweet scent of your musk. Oh my Jeff, God. Jeff was really a fan of Natalie's okay. um, scent, and Steve seems to be a fan of mine. That are tearing through underwear. It's true. It's only because Nick just leaves them out. If and you have a pup- Steve, if, to if come you have a puppy at your home eating through your underwear, replace them with me undies. Me undies. It's really incredible underwear. They're breathable. They got some durability to them. They're wonderful, but also they're hot. Also, like you look so good in Thanks, your meandies. Mm, thank you. It's true. They also have a wide selection of like patterns and styles. Something for everyone. They're fun. If you want to mix it up, you can get matching underwear with for uh, him and hers. I also you know? love their lounge collection. They have comfy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. Their Move Me Activewear collection is the softest activewear on the market. It mm. truly is. It feels like butter on my skin. Their material is fantastic, and as far as underwear goes, it's uh, it's all in the right place. It's breathable, like it should. And it's durable. It doesn't, uh, some of those other fancier underwears, their fabric is so breathable that it seems to like disintegrate in your pants. You know what I'm talking about? Some of that fancy, cheap underwear. But not me undies. Kick off the new year comfier than ever before and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at meundies.com slash V I A L L. That's meundies.com slash V I A L L M E U N D I E S dot com slash V I A L L for 20% off plus free shipping. That's me undies. Comfort. From the outside in. Vessi, you know them, you love them. They're keeping your feet dry and comfortable all year round. Whoever you are, whether you're a city walker, you know, you're braving the city streets, commuting from your apartment to your job, or maybe you're a hiker, more of an outdoorsy person. Vessi has you covered. Finally, a pair of sneakers that are comfortable, stylish, and keep your feet warm and dry, whatever the conditions. No longer do you have to deal with damp, soggy, wet feet. I mean, we all know what it's like to be walking in a city and stepping in a puddle that didn't look like a puddle, and then, oh God, the worst. It's the worst. The, your your feet are soaked the rest of the day. What are you going to do? Well, not with Vessi. You no longer have that problem. So whether you are just a commuter or a traveler, or you like going out there and and hiking. Vessi has a shoe for you. I mean, they're really taking over the world. I'm seeing people wearing Vessis all the time now. So you got to join the bandwagon because people all around this great country of ours are keeping their feet dry and comfortable. 
and you are missing out if you're not one of those people. Head to Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L and get yourself a pair today. Again, go to Vessi.com, that's V-E-S-S-I.com slash V-I-A-L-L and get 15% off your first order. Derek, you were wearing a pair of Vessis the other day. It looked really comfortable and looked like a style king. Yeah, I mean, a few weeks ago it was really rainy in LA and there was a ton of puddles. And you know what? I just strolled right through them. They're 100% waterproof, not water resistant. Waterproof. Waterproof. Stay dry. Amazing. Stay dry. Yeah. He just has Vessi to get him from point A to point B. That's all he needs. I trust them with my life. Again, go to Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L and get 15% off your first order. That's Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L and get yourself a pair today. Skims, babe, take it away. I just want to tell you guys about this underwear I'm obsessed with. I just can't keep it to myself. It's so good. It's the Fits Everybody Collection by Skims. And I truly feel like it's their best kept secret. And it's not only just their underwear. Like their Fits Everybody Collection in general is amazing. Yes, you're looking at my shirt. It's a it's yeah. Skims. Are you wearing Skims right now? I'm wearing Skims right now. I'm wearing a Skims t-shirt. I'm wearing Skims panties. Mm. It's giving Skims all around. I'm wearing a Skims bra. <laughs> yes! Yes, we are Skims stands at the Vowel Files here. What I love about Skims, I'll tell you right now. And ladies, I'm sure you can relate. You know what I'm saying when you're wearing like a thong and maybe it's just like not keeping everything inside. You've got maybe like a, like a loose, oh. like out, you know, flapping in the wind. Flag, tight, oh, not with Skims. A flag was flying. A flag was flying, but not with Skims. They keep everything together. <laughs> tight. It's perfect. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody Collection and more Perfect Fit Essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. That's skims, S-K-I-M-S dot com. Head there now. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. I do that every single time I buy from them, which is every day. There's not much to talk about, Taylor and I mean, they're still in love. They spent New Year's Eve together. Yeah, I saw them kissing in a video. Cute. At midnight. Must be nice. <laughs> Y'all didn't stay up? No, we fell asleep. I was awake. Did you watch the ball drop at least? Like at 7 p.m.? Or <laughs> did, you know, did you watch the New York version? Nine, no, yeah. we did. We, we had the New York we were version gonna, on. And then just... I looked at the clock and it was 9.04 our time. So 12.04 New York time. Like, and I was like, Nick, what the because they were airing the the Pacific, the the West Coast version. Yeah. So we missed the New York ball drop. Aww. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe next Worst. year we'll go crazy with our daughter. Yeah, we'll have a kid. Uh, that next is year. so wild. That's not. I know. Ugh, I saw the be... little baby clothes though. I I'm know. just so I excited. See our <laughs> the nursery. I said I want a whole OOTD. No, account for truly. this baby. Uh, Sierra, something I wanted to do with you because yes. uh, the release of Vanderpump season 11 is dropping this month. When is it? The end of the month? January, January 30th. 30th. <laughs> she knows. Uh, <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to do like a kind of a Vanderpump power ranking okay. of like what we think of these characters mm -hmm. because, you know, they are characters on a show. Thousand percent. Um, now that the dust of Scandival has settled-ish and now we're, we're going into the new year, what do we think? What's at stake for each of these cast members as they go into season 11? And where do we feel or how do we feel about these people? And what do they have to win, lose? What do they have to gain or lose going into season 11? Oh, where to start? Who to start with? Great do, question. Do we start with Tom Sandoval or do we start with, with Ariana? Ariana. Which one do you want to start with? Um, let's do Tom. Tom Sandoval. I mean, I think it's this is going to be a rough season for him. Obviously, I think that you think so. I do. I think that people are tired, obviously, of Sandoval. The whole thing. I think he's done a fine job of putting himself out there enough to kind of distance himself because, like, what that was like last March. But I mean, I pers I personally like I I I just don't like cheaters. I don't like the hypocrite kind of position that he's in, to where it's just kind of like he takes zero accountability, zero responsibility, but yet wants everybody to have sympathy for him. And I can't really stand behind that. So I mean, I'll be interested to see this season being forced with all of the those people that he's going to be trying to win back, essentially. I, I, I would be interested to see his take on it, but, like, I feel like it's kind of hard to forgive somebody or, like, forget that whole situation. Like, I would be fine if he wasn't on the show, to be completely honest. I know. Really? Hot take. 
Yeah, he's just he's just never been my favorite, to be honest. I know he's a buddy of yours, but I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you carried the man on your back, literally. <laughs> he literally. Back. <laughs> he's not an enemy of mine. No, not at all. Um, and listen, he we're not like hanging out. Yeah, but you, you know, know I, I did get to know him, and you don't have to say that to stay in my good graces. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like. I don't think I think, listen, he's a human being. People do bad things. Obviously, it's it's how you come back from it after the fact. Absolutely. Did you learn something from it? Are we still not taking any responsibility or are we acting like this is something that happened to you that you had no choice in? Because that's what bothers me the most. Tom and Tom will be on the show sometime this month. Honestly, we have so many other major interviews to mm -hmm. get through this month that like, honestly, the Tom and Tom. Humble brag. Uh, we just have to find a spot for them. Right. That's how big this month. If is I can be, be in that corner, I would love that. But I would love what would if, from your point of view. Mm -hmm. What Rachel Lindsay and Brian Abalso file for divorce. <gasps> Breaking news. Yeah. What? Eleven minutes ago, Allie just sent it to me. Oh my god. She, she is just on it. here. She was just here. Oh, I'm sorry Whoa. to hear. I'm she just was like, just here, and she literally was just like, "Yeah, like we've." We're great. Like we, because well, I was you like, you don't expect anyone to. No, I guess. Say otherwise, when they're no, not. No, I know, but, but like, oh my god. I mean, if she would have came on here and said, "Well, you know, like," we're probably gonna file for divorce soon. <laughs> <laughs> or even if she was like, you know, you know, like relationships are really hard, and you know, who knows what the future holds. I will say, I think it's interesting. The so it's an E News post that just broke ten minutes ago, and it it phrases it. Brian files for divorce from Rachel. Oh. Oh, yeah. So she might have been blindsided? Possible. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Their date of separation was Sunday, December 31st. He is also <gasps> requesting spousal support from her. What? Happy New Year. He's requesting spousal support. What do we think of that? Uh, how long have they been together? Couple years. Well, I mean, they met in 2017 on the show. Married for four. What does he do? He's a chiropractor. He's a chiropractor. Right? I mean, you know that she's more successful than him. It's not. It's not <laughs> shocking. It's giving Ariana Grande filing for spousal support from Dalton, and it was just like, in what world? <laughs> Literally, you know. Come on, babe. Yeah, no, like. <laughs> She's worth like twenty million dollars, but okay, yeah. She asked for spousal, spousal support, support, and he's like worth like him. three. Mm -hmm. That was like on the fi the divorce paper filing. Is but that just like a lawyer thing? Maybe it's like a security thing where I'm like, even if you don't actually go through with it, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it's a power move. I don't know what it is, but I'm just like, obviously, she makes more money than him. So, and when somebody gets used to a certain lifestyle, I just do think it's wild that you're just kind of like, well, I was used to spending their money, and now that yeah. I'm not getting that. I still legally. Right. I just, you know, I know Nally's are Nally and I are in the heels of a marriage, and we love sharing everything. Yeah, even Stanley Cups, obviously. <laughs> yeah, even Stanley Cups. <laughs> um, but like two successful people in their own right, doing their own thing, right. having no kids, can't you just like handshake and just kind of be like, "Hey, all right, good luck. All right, wish Take you care. the best." Yeah, wish you the best, and like not ask for each other's money. Well, funny thing that you say that because I, for the longest time, was like. As growing up, I was like, I don't ever want to get married. I want to be like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. And I've come to find that they are the exception, not the rule. Oh. And after Scandal, seeing two people who have been together for a decade, just living in a house together, having babies on ice, and seeing how complicated breaking up has been, sharing assets and things like that, I'm like, mm, Connor. <laughs> we're not doing anything until yeah. you put a ring on it yeah like yeah. literally like by a state because in like california specifically we don't um we don't recognize domestic partnerships so it's kind of what lala said in the reunion she was like oh i'm sure the court will care that you feel like you're married they don't yeah. they don't care even if you've been together for however long so that's where i'm like having everything set in stone and even having the paperwork that's like hey if we break up you leave with what you came with like you know what i mean and having that set in stone and it's an agreement beforehand because i think breakups are messy divorce i'm sure is extremely messy but i'm like having two people share life together for a decade without any type of protection mm -hmm. involved i mean there's no limits truly you know so he filed for divorce on december 31st that that was the date of separation listed man oh it gosh. sounds abrupt a lot of speculating i feel bad maybe we should just yeah text accept her it and... yeah we wish her the best
We do. We a little wish. bit more than Brian. I mean, we wish them both the best, but I'm more friends with Rachel. <laughs> So, like, Team Rachel, sorry, fuck. Like, <laughs> if we're choosing teams, I don't know if we are, but yeah. next week they will be back with sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> team, team Rachel. Rachel. Uh, all right, anyways, back to back Vanderpump. To Vanderpump. So okay. sorry, I just felt like that was, no, that we was, just needed to bring yeah, that back. Wow. Uh, we don't usually get breaking news in the middle of a recording session. Usually it happens, like, right when we get done. We're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Pick it up. Um, so Tom Sandoval. What could he say? Him and Tom sitting on this couch... What what could Tom Sandoval say? That would change my mind specifically. Not uh, that <laughs> would would make. I guess what would, could he say that would make you go, "All right, I feel the way I feel about him. He fucked up. He sucks. He blah blah blah." But like, honestly, I don't know. Maybe he's he's contrite and he's he's trying to make the most of this, and he seems like pers- a person willing to learn from this. Like, could he say something that would make him demonstrate that maybe he's on a path of maturity? Yeah, um, he's had also like, what, nine months to say this as well and hasn't in mm-hmm. any interview, any podcast, anything that any I've seen. Any TV either, show any... where he was very vulnerable and could talk about <laughs> the terrible things that he's done in his life and wants to grow from and be better pers- from. Watching the podcast where it was just like, well, Ariana wanted and it was just like, no, no, say that, hey, I made a choice. A bad one. But I made a choice that I believed in because I and I was confused. I was scared of what was going to happen after the fact if I decided that I wanted to be with Rachel and like actually taking responsibility instead of victim blaming instead of, oh, we weren't happy. Well, she didn't want to have kids. Like it's it's everybody else's fault is from what I've heard throughout the last nine months. So I'm like to actually see somebody take responsibility and grow from it. I just don't believe that that's the case. Yeah, and we'll like, see. I don't know either. Did you watch the trailer for the new season? Yeah. So there's that clip where James, where I was never expecting him to be a, a the number one guy. MVP yeah. on my bingo card ever. But there's a scene where he's talking to Tom and he's like, you have so much growing up to do and it's sad, man. And I was like, the idea that this kid's like, maybe not half his age, but like close enough to where I'm just like, and looking at him being like, you have growing to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what season Tom is in right now. Other than I think maybe he's in a party season. He's been in a party season since the beginning since of he was time. 20. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, I think he's episode one, season one, the party trick of the shots going into the thing, and he was like, you know, yeah, <laughs> we're all metal actors out here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But we'll give it the old college try when he's here. We'll give it the old college try, and I can't wait to see and hear what he has to say. Tom Swartz. What would you like to see from Tom Swartz? What does he have to lose? What's at stake for Tom Swartz going into season 11? Um, I'd like to see Tom Swartz have his own identity. Um, I didn't realize how much he really hid behind Sandoval, but also Katie. You know what I mean? He kind of made Katie the bad guy in their relationship. So you always had this like sympathy for him up until you see them split and Katie demand like respect for herself. Then all of a sudden it was like, wow. And I had some really strong opinions about him, but I was like, it was very, it was giving very like weasel, like to where it's just like, oh, we're going to throw her under the bus and be like, <laughs> look at what I have to deal with. And then come to find out, I'm like, you're just as responsible for the choices and decisions that are happening in your life. It's not everybody else. So, and even watching him on Winter House, did you guys watch Winter House? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was very like, mm, like, oh, well, it's so hard for me to move on and everything. So it's very like victim. So I would like to see him kind of, who is he? Who is Tom Schwartz outside of a relationship, outside of the Toms? I would like to know from both Toms, like, Vanderpump ends tomorrow. What's your life look like? What do you do? Right. Like, what do you have planned for yourself? I'm like... I feel like a lot of the other cast members have at least a plan, an idea of of, of a passion of something they want to do outside of Vanderpump. Can I say, Tom Schwartz actually does bewilder me, though, because I said... He is the epitome of the line, like, fake it till you make it, because it was like he had he was never a cast member on the first like two seasons. He got a job at one of the restaurants for like an hour. Right. He panicked and then just like left his shift. He was like, I don't know how to do a a job. And then what? Four seasons in five seasons in Lisa just hands him part like an ownership of a bar and I'm just like I've never seen that in my life like where it's like he has no idea what he wants to do besides possibly be a model actor his biggest quality was like I'm really good at jumping while people take photos of me (laughs) and then come to find out he's a you know 5% bar owner and then a half bar owner at a 
what is it? Not Tom Tom. What's the other one? Schwartz and Sandy's. Schwartz and Sandy's. So yeah. it's like, and now full time, right? Because I think Sandoval stepped down from that. So did he? Yeah, I don't think he's. Uh, he, he gave. It's him. Uh, I think it's Tom Schwartz and Greg running I, it, or does Tom? Th- th- I, I don't think Sandoval's a part of Schwartz and Sandy's anymore. From what I read, he could not be a part of like from a decision making standpoint, but he could still like have the equity, Shares. like as a, like a more of a silent partner nowadays, where they're just like, hey. We don't want you making decisions. I mean, if his name's still on it, unless Swartz and Greg bought out Sandoval. That's what I'm. That's what I'm under the impression of. Feel free to ask them. But I'll like, ask them. yeah, no, I'm pretty positive that it's just Schwartz after everything, and I know that he still has his shares in Tom Tom. But, um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm very curious. It Are, says as of September, he still owns part of it. It's still owned. Sandoval uh, still owns yeah, part. I of- have a hard time believing Sandoval would give up his equity. Next on the list, Sheena. Sheena. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> a complicated figure. It, yeah, it's it's funny because it's like there's a part of me that always wants to root for Sheena, and then it's Same. like she kind of always does something to where I'm just like, girl, when when will you get it? Like, stop being the guy's girl. Stop like just just be real for once. And then um, obviously the preview came out where they're trying to make it look as if uh, Schwartz and Sheena made out in. Vegas. Vegas. I saw that she tweeted back as somebody like was like, I can't believe you would do that. And she and goes, like, I, I didn't. didn't. So like part of me is wondering if he actually made out with Mini Sheena and that they just like edited it so that it's do you remember Mini Sheena from Vegas? I'm not familiar. We are only a I'm uh so so you know. Season ten, watch it all. Okay. We're now in the beginning of season three. Okay, so on our rewatch. It's Wi-Fi Plus. season eight. Yeah, this is when you when you get introduced because uh, Lisa's opening up her restaurant oh, in, in Vegas. Vegas yeah. mm-hmm. um, but mm-hmm. there's a girl that works there that everybody dubbed Mini Sheena because she mm-hmm. literally looks like her. She's 20 something years old and very like <laughs> and like that's who I'm kind of thinking that they might oh, have like definitely oh, going to be. who yeah. it is. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm like, I, I find it so hard to believe after all of this time that in everything going down that this hadn't wouldn't have come out sooner. You know? Yeah. That it was definitely Mini Sheena. It was definitely Mini Sheena. So that's where I was like, I instantly was like, yes, because at the end of last season, I was so proud of Sheena, like for having that sit down with Sandoval and mm-hmm. just being like, you could have called her mom. You could have told us, but you didn't have to go and make out with her friend. Yeah. And I was like, finally, you are getting it. And then when I saw the the trailer, I kind of ran away with it being like, oh, finally give this girl credit. But no, sh- I think Sheena's going to be the one that I'm watching the most to see how she's grown. Because she's finally, I feel like, especially having a daughter and being married and being in that space, I think she's finally getting to a place to where I can be like an outwardly Sheena fan. Do you think um, the clips, not only I think on, well, there was a clip of her doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. I think it was more from that. Talking about how Ariana doesn't understand how hard this has been for her. Yeah. And what do you make of that? Because that's not even a small eye roll for me. It's a massive, you know, it, eye roll. You didn't have to go on a podcast. You didn't have to say it, but that's also part of who Sheena is. Like yeah. Sheena, kind of like Sandoval, doesn't like to take full responsibility for her actions. There's always like a caveat as to like how it's not her fault or how she got played in the situation. But I don't think that there's ever a way to where you will be in the right for saying that this was hard on you. Ever, because I'm like the only person that got fully humiliated is Ariana. Ariana. Like, I don't care how close you were to Rachel. I'm sorry that she was part part of your family. And it's not to say that it didn't affect you. Sure. Right. But this is not your moment to ever take the spotlight and say, but what about me? Right. Especially because her and Lala and, well, quite frankly, everyone, Mm -hmm. but especially her, I, who, Let me rephrase this. I'm kind of giving you the answer to, I'm giving you the answer to my question for me, but who do you think has tried to capitalize on Scandival the most? Um, I mean, Lala had to send it to Daryl and she was kind of, I, mm, yeah, yep, that's what she put her down payment on her Palm Springs house. <laughs> with, was, was all the money she made from send it to Daryl. I was going to say, yeah, I'm like, I feel like Katie wasn't really out on the forefront and obviously none of the guys. So yeah, between Sheena and Lala, cause they made merch. Mm-hmm. 
Um, podcasts and their their podcasts they really leaned in well also they just put out like their christmas song where they like diss rachel and it's an awful song but it's also like why now (laughs) (laughs) we're in december this happened in march like let 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 the dog die you should have done a saint patrick's day song (laughs) (laughs) if you wanted to do this you know (laughs) like it's just so i'm like and you're still trying to like capitalize on james made a little bit of merch like uh the worm merch Sandoval Zelaya. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. Which but honestly, I don't have a problem with any of them doing any of that. I Get think it's your a, bag. Yeah. But just shut the fuck up when you're you're trying to shine a spotlight about how difficult this has been for you. Like you don't get to You don't get to monetize off of it and yeah. then also victimize yourself at the yeah. same time. You don't get to do that. And it wasn't about you. You yeah. know what I mean? At the end of the it wasn't about you, Sheena. Where I'm like, Rachel coming out with the podcast. That one to me where I was like, I thought you wanted to be out of the spotlight. No, she just wants to be in control. And now it's like not only want to be in control of the narrative, but I'm like still trying to find a way to monetize off of Scandaval, even though we're supposed to be not talking about that anymore. Even the name of your podcast. Like what? You know, what is it? Rachel goes rogue. You already went rogue. She did. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Again? Or Rachel goes rogue part two. (laughs) And Rachel Goes Rogue doesn't sound like a title like that's focused on mental be- health, betterment of right. yourself. Yeah. No. It sounds sloppy. No. Listen, I love a messy title. I mean, I love a mess, like especially in the podcast space. From a marketing standpoint, I get it. Mm-hmm. But it, to your point, it doesn't align with what she is also trying to come across and, and, and make herself out to be the victim. Rachel right. certainly tried that on Bethany's podcast with the help of Bethany. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I you see. Know. But yeah, no, Sheena and Lala to me have been kind of the two people more than anyone who've tried to monetize this experience. Well, and Lala too, where I'm like, obviously, bless your heart. I know that she went through a really tough year with her split from her awful ex. Randall. Yeah. I'm just like, but at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of like jealousy that kind of came into it being that her moment kind of got stolen by Scandaval because she wanted to use uh, Vanderpump Rules to be able to talk about the divorce. And they had the New York Mm -hmm. Times piece come Mm -hmm. out and the Hulu specials and all of that. And she said like all of her stuff pretty much got cut once Scandaval dropped. Um, So I feel like she's going to do that again this year. And like we're still talking about the I keep wanting to call it a divorce, but they were never married. So yeah, the whole Randall of it all, but yeah, no, nobody cared at the time. Be interesting, interesting to see how Lala tries to thread that needle, right? You know, because she also had that line in the trailer about you know, she's never met anyone who got cheated on and then became became God, God. yeah, or something like that. And is that the big question? Is is that just a overly hyped sizzle that's maybe somewhat taken out of context, or is that a moment? where Lala is at her wit's end with the attention that Ariana is getting. And the it's all bottled up to her. It, like, yeah, I mean, deep down, I you know, behind closed doors, you got to wonder how frustrated Lala is, you know, thinking about... Because you could make an argument for Lala that mm-hmm. what she went through was... Arguably worse, and or, there's a child involved. Yeah. You know, know, and somebody who has a lot of power and a lot of money Mm -hmm. in this town. like And scary, yeah, With and they had to get lawyers involved. And there was a lot more red tape and bullshit and and fears that Lala had to deal with Mm -hmm. over Ariana. That's that's a pretty easy argument to make. A thousand percent. And and yet. And even then, the same, like, cheating scenario has already gone down on two different seasons of the show. So I'm like, the exact same way that Jax cheated on Stassi, lied about it, maybe it wasn't the best friend. Oh, actually, Kristen. Hi. So I'm like, even then, where I'm just like, Stassi was the one that was villainized for how she reacted to the cheating and everything and wasn't given this platform. But I was like, after 10 years, well, let's say Ariana was on for like eight seasons, so like, after eight years of like watching this relationship, I think that's why it blew up the way that it did was because we all were invested with the parasocial relationship of being like, oh, we watched this go from Kristen being crazy or whatever to them getting together to like, oh, I believe in true love to being like he would never cheat with the best friend. That's why it blew up the way that it did was because we were already like a part of that yeah. relationship. But for all the other ones, it was like year one, year three, like we were like people get cheated on every day all the time. Yeah. Lala 
if Randall was actually on the show, like actually and not just like a guest star every once in a while, I feel like even then that would have had a different reaction. Also, I feel like people looked at Lala and Randall and immediately were like, just let us know when it doesn't work out. Yeah. I think that was the overwhelming perception of that relationship was just let me know when they file for divorce. <laughs> well, right? and I she kind of like led us to believe that like everything was okay up until it wasn't. You know what I mean? Sure, but I don't know if anyone ever really warmed up to Lala and Randall as a couple. You know what I'm saying? No one was like rooting for them. No. Well, know? I mean, everybody kind of saw it for what it sure what it, it looked like. It's it it didn't have the best optics a to thousand start percent. with, mm -hmm. and it was already it it was wrapped up in scandal when it began. Yeah, he was married. Yeah. Right? So you know, I think unfortunately for Lala, she wasn't able to capture on an overwhelming amount of empathy and support, whether that's fair or not. Right. You know, but that there's, that's why Scandaval took off and her situation never really did. Faded to the background. But she was able to monetize Scandaval. Honey got a house in yeah. Palm Springs. They're she, all thriving for it. She's doing great. They're all doing great. Yeah. Let's be serious. Still waiting for the sandwich shop to get opened. Well, we'll yes. find out from Katie. Is she uh, coming on? She, yeah. This Thursday, this I'm going deeper <laughs> uh, with a big announcement. Massive announcement. Yeah. So, Katie, so, Katie has a big announcement. Oh, I can't wait, you guys. Yeah. I love the show. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on. Speaking uh, of Katie, Katie's, what do you want to see from Katie this season? Uh, Katie's one of my favorites. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah, I, I am team Katie all the way. Um, I loved watching her gain her independence and demand respect. I love seeing her just not a part of a team right now. You know what I mean? And I like that. I like that she's always a girl's girl. She backs up her friends till the end. But her just like telling Tom Schwartz the truth after they broke up. I was just like, I love her so much. I want the best for her. I'm like, I don't really think I have a comment on it. I love that she's uh, experimenting. I, I saw the whole, like, there's a girl that's hooking up with both of them. Uh, yeah, I believe her and Tom share, uh, are fighting over a lady. Like, Fun. give it. Give yeah. it. She got her hair cut. She was like, I'm coming back. The <sighs> boss. Actually, she came over to our house, like, like, the weekend that happened and told us all about it. <sighs> yeah. I, like, I want the tea. Um, no, I love her. Katie can do no wrong to me. As I said, all I want is the sandwich shop open. I want her to thrive. Do you think uh, James and Allie will work out? I do. I think she's so great for him. I I'd like to see more Allie this season. Yeah. I'd like to have her have a more prominent role. I always get concerned because I'm like, she's just so nice. You know what I mean? That I'm yeah. just like, this is a tough, this is a tough group, I think, to like ride with, with all the drama. But somehow, I mean, as she keeps her mouth she's shut. She's way more articulate and smarter in person than I think she, she comes is, off. than she comes off on the show. Yeah. And I think she's edited it down to being kind of a quiet and like almost young, mm -hmm. you know, demure girl. And I did not, that's not the impression I got from her when I've met her a handful of times in person. Yeah. Like she really seems like she is a good influence on James and like she has no problem kind of like letting him know when he's wrong. Like, I think she has more control in that relationship in a good way than the show portrays them to. I think that was also kind of clear uh, the beach day when she was just like, you're embarrassing yourself. Yeah. Sit down. Like it was just like, but not in a way to where wanting a bigger reaction. It was just very much like, hey, like, yeah, I'm checking. I'm you. talking to you. Yeah. Simmer down. So I'm like, I really like her. I think she's got her her ducks in a row and I'm excited to see more from her. How do you think Ariana should play this season? Um, I, I mean... And do you give her any amount of criticism for up until Scandaval acting somewhat indifferent about infidelity when it didn't have to affect, when it didn't have to do with her? So I had a weird thought about this this morning, actually, um, because I'm like, I do think that there, everybody has like paths in life, right? And when you're kind of going down the wrong one, I think the universe kind of steps in and is like, ah. Like, I know that you feel comfortable, I know, and like complacency, comfortability is great, but complacency, not so much. And I think that clearly her journey was meant for so much more that unfortunately it had to blow up the way that it did. Because I think that maybe she was meant for all of the stuff that's been coming for her, you know what I mean? But she was never going to actually experience that being in Tom Sandoval's shadow, you know, yeah. or the number one supporter. Like, she's like, cool, I have a nice house, I can hang out with my friends all day, I film, 
But it's like, no, get out there and 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 like live your life the way that it's supposed to go down. So that's where I'm like, I don't really have. I just hope that she's not like I hope it hasn't all gone to her head. You know what I mean? Like, I hope that she doesn't go on there and is like diva esque or just like, well, this is my side gig now because I mean, yeah, homegirls wrecking it in. Yeah, it'll be really interesting how she. Because they also thought that what she had a superiority complex, like that's what Stassi said, like on a season was saying that like her and Tom think very highly of themselves. So I'd be interested to see her A in the new relationship and B just like, yeah, how she's handling everything uh, post Scandival with, you know, she's guest starred, she's dancing with the stars, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Actually, I actually think dancing with the stars came after filming now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I came after filming. So I'm like, yeah, I just want I'm I'm curious to see if it's changed her personality, if it humbled her, if it if she's just exactly the same. I don't know. I would imagine I mean, I haven't really talked to her, but I would imagine she's probably mostly the same. So I'm saying I'm like, yeah, when you go from living with a man that does karaoke 24 7 and just like hanging out with your friends watching love island it's a little different than all of a sudden being out in the world dating somebody in new york like going on all of these shows and guest starring and everything so i'm just like i think it's just interesting to see if that's affected her at all or if it's just kind of like i own this you know like it's finally like my turn but it doesn't change me because that's what she wanted to do to begin with have you seen the preview of lisa's new show on hulu no it's like a new vanderpump rule vanderpump she, villa or something yeah she's opening up a restaurant in Paris. Is it is it Paris employees? Is it a bunch of Paris kids, or is it a bunch of American transplants? It's her house, right, Ali? At her French, yeah, home, I believe, in a chateau in France. Yeah. It's a house. It's, it's her, her house. Yeah, it's like her housekeepers yeah. and the butlers. Yeah, I was like, I remember seeing the casting call Ooh. for that because I think they're gonna have guests come to the house, so they're constantly like, mm. almost like Vanderpump Rules, but it's like below deck as well. Yeah. Mm. So, isn't it interesting that it's on Hulu though and not Bravo? Or Peacock, yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah, that is weird. Maybe her contract's up with Bra now. It's kind of. You would think at yeah. least or like just Peacock original. Yeah, but it's on Hulu. I don't. know. I couldn't tell you about We'd that. Have one. to ask her. <laughs> yeah. But that looks good though. Do we, and do we know? Is it French people or is it American transplants? Do we know? What, what, I think what, it's just. I think it's just her villa, her what, chateau. Why are, yeah. Why yeah. do you think it has anything to do with Paris or French it, people? Oh, chateau. Oh, they're film. I thought they were filming I it in Paris. It is. It's yeah. It's not. I don't think it's in Paris necessarily, but it's in France. It's in like yeah. the French, like off the French coast it's not, or something. It's not her Casa de Lisa. Oh. Villa Rosa. Villa Rosa. Um, yeah. Ever, ever been? Have I been to Villa Rosa? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Haven't gotten that invite yet, but Lisa, I'm waiting. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> She's a very Same. nice host. Uh, I bet. Did you see her mini horses? She gave me the whole tour. Yeah. Why were you there? Uh, I was a guest in our very first podcast episode that no longer exists. Oh. But Nick. <laughs> um, R.I.P. Jealousy. Yeah. Seething. She had too many things going on. Uh, yeah. I want. I want to go on her. Uh, I know. I don't think it's a show anymore. But she had that show that was like the dinner party, where like everyone would come to her house and she'd cook dinner and just get them drunk and. I, I was have a guest time. on that. Are you remotely. kidding? Yeah. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> You've met my hero. <laughs> And I'm glad she lives up to it because they say don't meet your heroes. Oh, Lisa? Yeah, I love her. Love her. She's on uh, She's pretty on, right? I don't think she'd disappoint you. I don't think so either. I think I would just want to pick her brain and learn everything. I'm like, yeah. that is that is an entrepreneur right there. I really enjoyed her company. Yeah, in person. Yeah, she's intelligent. She's funny. She's beautiful. Ageless. Ageless. Timeless. Classy. You know. Anything else we want to talk about before we uh, let Sierra go? Anything else you just want to get off your chest? No, I'm I'm just time. happy to be here. <laughs> I am just happy to be here. I'm ready for my shows to pick up this week. We've got Kyle and Sutton and then Yeah, what Denise are the what are the housewives like scandals that you're that that are you're in mid form that you need answers to? Like your your housewives burning questions that you are excited for clarity. Everything with Monica. Everything with Monica while the cast mates hate her. Um, I need to know if the, the Kyle and um, Morgan and tattooing her initial on her body and everything. I'm just like, why, oh. why are we so secretive about what's going on there? Do you think they're just best friends? 
Well, actually, that just reminded me. We didn't even talk about Mauricio and Aspen with Anita with that, yeah, pop star. Uh-huh. And then, and then, fast forward to like Christmas, New Year's week. Rihanna and A$AP Kyle Rocky. and ASAP Rocky and Mauricio like the were out shopping in Aspen together, off the heels of him like pop literally popping bottles at shirtless. some sort of shirtless with ski goggles. <laughs> I mean, living truly his best life. Truly. I was like, at champagne guns. He didn't give a fuck. They were just going. I will say Kyle came out and said that she said Anita's just a really close friend. Whatever that so means. Whatever Morgan. that means. But so. the fact that Mauricio, <laughs> just like optics wise, was yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to take my shirt off. I'm going to wear some fucking goggles. I'm going to be with this like pop star that's, I don't know, half his age or whatever. Smoking. And uh, yeah, yeah, very attractive. And regardless of what is like kosher or not yeah. with his understanding with what him and uh kyle have going on the fact that he just like i don't give a fuck what people say i gotta respect i i'm i'm envious of that amount of gives a fuck yes or lack thereof or truly, truly just out there i love how involved rihanna is in housewives like remember when she dm'd heather and at season one reunion i think was like yeah, Rihanna DM'd me and told me to like keep it real and mm-hmm. whatever. And now she's like hanging out with Kyle. Kyle. We got to get Rihanna on here to talk housewives. A thousand percent. I was like, she also, oh gosh, what did she do? Um, this was like years ago. Rihanna? I, I'm lo- I lost it. But yeah, no, Rihanna's been a huge fan of like Bravo and the Housewives, always has something to say. And she, oh, it was when, uh, it was Vanderpump Rules. She, I believe she had mentioned something about like Kristen needing to get fired after like having. Oh no, it was Lady Gaga. That was Lady Gaga. That was yeah. Lady Gaga. My bad. My uh, bad. But s- another icon. Another icon. <laughs> so many icons watch Bravo. Love Do you think that. Gypsy watches reality. TV? I think this is what you need to introduce her to. <laughs> like bring her into the stratosphere. Give her a list. The world needs to know Gypsy. Here, start from season. I wonder what yeah. she's been consuming. Right. I love how much you think about her. He does. <laughs> He thinks about her a lot. I mean, what is she doing right now? The world, like life, is about making decisions. Like as a father, an expecting father, Aww. and I think about like how I want to be a dad. Like I, it's my only job is to teach my daughter how to make decisions for herself. Right. That's it. That's that's honestly, I think the key to being a parent is just like teach them how to make decisions because that's what life is about. You'll be faced with unlimited decisions and how you approach the decisions and decisions you make that affect you and the people around you like will be a direct result in terms of how your life turns out your happiness and that's regardless of where you come from like the decisions you make and what's so fascinating about gypsy is this is a person where her ability to make decisions for herself was absolutely stolen from her Mm -hmm. her entire life and prison was her first taste of even to be able to make some decisions for herself. That right. was a step in the direction of freedom, was prison for Gypsy Rose. Right. And now that she's out of prison, she can now make decisions for herself. And what are those decisions going to be? Yes, I'm fascinated. I, well, just stay tuned. Watch her life, you know? Oh, we will. Because you know she'll document it. And it'll get millions and millions of views. You start sending her messages and being like, please post your top five yeah. favorite new experiences hey, this week. me again. <laughs> what did you watch? <laughs> what did you eat? Tell me everything. Have you tried alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many questions. We all are living vicariously through Gypsy. A thousand percent. All right. Well, I think it's time to say goodbye. Sierra, it's been oh, a pleasure. Thanks for having True. me. Come back soon. Oh. I'll live here. You'll have me. Uh, We can't appreciate you guys enough. It's going to be an incredible year. We're so excited to be kicking off this 2024 with you. Thanks for tuning in. On Going Deeper tomorrow, we have the dynamic duo of Katie Maloney and Dana Kathan with us. It's going to be a while. They have a major announcement. Uh, Be sure to tune in for that. It's going to be a lot of fun with those two. And then don't forget next week. Uh, going deeper special episode on Monday, Asnik on Tuesday, and then going deeper again on Thursday. Wild, wild, wild stuff. Can't wait to share it all with you, Sierra. Nick, 
Once again, thank you. Can you please let our audience know where they can follow you, find you, all the great stuff you're doing? Plug, plug away. (laughs) Uh, You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Sierra C. Robinson. And then uh, check out my blog at SierraCRobinson.com. What are you doing on that blog? Fashion. All of it. Travel. Recommendations. Influencing. Influencing. Mm. Well, (laughs) be influenced by Sierra. I mean... A woman with impeccable taste. Thank you so much. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and great Bravo takes. I love you both so much. <laughs> uh, and we love you back. All right, guys. We're going to let you go. We'll see you tomorrow. Can't wait. Oh, also, don't forget to send in those questions at asknickatthevilefiles.com for all things texting office hours, Ask Nick mediation. You know the drill. Uh, should we sign off now? Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.